Good morning, Facebook. Good morning. How y'all doing? Doing this morning? Everybody doing well? Um, I am going live this morning for a good old standard crypto interview. I'm glad to be back doing this. Uh, I got a pal of mine coming on today named Mr. Luke Riddle. He is going to join me. He is employee number 26 at Coinbase. So we're going, we're getting some, getting some information from the inside of Coinbase. Um, I don't think he works there anymore, but he started out there, uh, and I think he, he did what he needed to do and got up through. You know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, it's going it should be a really good show today. Really good interview learning about working for probably what's the, probably the largest, uh, Bitcoin blockchain company in the world. Um, Coinbase. So I'm, I'm sharing this with him. He should be jumping in here really soon. Da -da -da. My man Leif sharing it to the places that we share it with. Yeah, you got to be. What's going on? So yeah, here's Luke. He, he's coming in right now. Um, Listen, and anyone, uh, the deal is, I might not be in certain groups, but you guys can share it there. I just can't share it there. So <laughs> anybody who knows what I'm talking about, please share it in those other groups if you want to. This should be very informative. So let me go on and click on this request and get my man Luke in here. Good morning, top of the morning, Dex. How you doing? Make sure your phone's to the side, Luke. I forgot to tell you that. Sorry about that. Hey, what's going on, Luke? Hey, good morning. How you doing, man? You looking good, bro. <laughs> hey, I appreciate that. You got the locks flowing. Uh, you know what? This is uh, this is the post Navy look. This is uh, <laughs> <laughs> ten years of shaving every day and cutting my hair. I, f I figure out, you know, living the good life now. Yeah, man, you're looking good, man. Yeah, I really appreciate you coming on here, man. It's been a long time since I've seen you face to face. Of course, we talk on Facebook, but it's been a, it's been a while, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's fun. I, I I'm a lurker on your uh, on your Facebook <laughs> lives all the time. So uh, I appreciate it, man. So yeah, man. Let's let's hop right into it. Um, everyone, this is my man Luke Riddle. He was employee 26 at uh, Coinbase. Um, so he has experience working at the, probably the largest Bitcoin company, blockchain company in the world. Um, and I just wanted to talk to him and give his experience of, of working in an industry that is an emerging technology and everything's moving so fast. Um, we've had people who worked in partnerships at different coins. We've had people come on who have launched their own coins. And now we're talking about someone who's working in the space and who has worked in the space, I should say, and, and the, and the experiences that he had. So first of all, Luke, I just want to ask you, I ask everyone this, how did you even find out about cryptocurrency? How did you even get into cryptocurrency? Yeah, well, you know, and so thanks. First of all, I got to just say before I even answer that, what an honor it is to be on here. I Listen, your FIBA wallet is legendary. It was, it's <laughs> legendary. In fact, that like the uh, I was thinking about your commercial uh, from a couple years back. I think that might have been the first and, and one of the very few commercials I've ever seen, uh, you know, in the crypto space. It's so it's uh, it's honor. <laughs> Uh, so, so back in, I guess maybe the very beginning of 2013, uh, I was at a movie with a, with a friend there in Lexington and he started talking about this, you know, he was making a bunch of money on, on Bitcoin. I, I, I was like, Bitcoin, what, what is this? No idea. Started researching it. And then the, the economist side of my brain started really firing. And, uh, you know, we would sit around, there was a bunch of us there sitting around a country boy in Lexington. And we would just talk economics. You know, we just talked about the social implications of, of what could happen. And for me, as I really had a passion for, you know, kind of seeing a lot of these developing countries of what, what could happen. For me, I, the biggest question I, I, I felt was facing us economically was how do we bank, you know, uh, two and a half to three billion unbanked people? Like, what, what does that look like? That, that's got to be the biggest global economic question that, you know, that, that we got to ask ourselves because that's, that's affecting people. Like, that's really right. affecting people. And so that's what got me inspired to get into cryptocurrency in the beginning. So um, as, we, as I started looking at it, and then I actually attended one of your meetups, and uh, you, were the, you were the one who, uh, you know, really 
got me into it. And then obviously, you know, met, met late and then, uh, you know, and, and the conversations that you and I had, um, you know, mostly via, you know, just kind of text and, and, and whatever else a lot over the telephone inspired me to, then to uh, pursue it. Cause when I, when I, once you get the bug, it's hard to get rid of it. And once you see the, <laughs> once you see the implications, it's, uh, you know, and, and you see how like, you know, we get to be a part of something that affects people's lives in a positive way, like right. a real positive way. And, right. uh, and so as I started seeing that, and as you started, you know, kind of explaining to me, I realized I needed to stop what I was doing. I was working as a, as a trader. Uh, I was trading by, uh, dry bulk shipping stocks. You want to talk about the most boring thing ever. <laughs> uh, and uh, so, you know, I talked to you and you're like, yeah, you know what, even if this, this Coinbase thing, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of small, but you're like, just do it. And so I, I took the plunge based a lot on your mentorship and, um, and went from it for there. So it's, it's been a fantastic ride and uh, something that I, I, you know, I just feel so lucky to have been a part of. Man, that's, that's awesome. So here's the thing. Once you took the plunge, I know it was crazy and hectic at the beginning of Coinbase. When you, when you first took the plunge, what about working at Coinbase did you really, really like and what, like what there kind of was different from you being at the boring job or in the Navy? Like what was what was what, yeah? Well, talk about those differences, man. I mean, we're talking about different planets. You know, we were talking <laughs> different planets. Uh, I, I spent ten years as a as an officer in the Navy, and this is you know the very few rules have changed over the last two hundred years in the Navy. I mean, like the technology's changed. Very few other things have changed. <laughs> uh, so going going then, uh, you know, from kind of that being my my central background into a startup where, especially in the early days, as, as you well know, the, the, the whole makeup of the ecosystem was different. Uh, and yeah. so you had an incredible amount of ideologues, uh, which a lot of them were either far left or far right anarchists. But either way, they, a, a, lot of, a lot of anarchists, a lot of people who were um, extraordinarily anti-business uh, in, in, in the capitalist way that, we've, that we're kind of grown accustomed to. So in the beginning, it was it was a very strange handshake because you're bringing together <laughs> you're bringing together these people who are just like from di from diametrically opposed viewpoints, you know, either from like me this very controlled space into this kind of anarchistic place, and then also the banking industry and the finance industry, uh, you know, into this place where everyone's meeting together w with this central goal and. It was it was incredibly uh, incredibly interesting. So right, to kind of to kind of see that, but but the passion that was involved there was uh, was pretty immense. The folks that they hired um, typically were people where they like there were so few rules. It was just go and build, and uh, and and so that was incredibly inspiring. And Coinbase today still you know is is a place where there's a lot of innovation. Uh, and the and the people that are, work there, I just have so much respect for. Um, but man, yeah, I mean, it was pretty much you kind of come in and uh, you have this idea that you're going to come into this space. It's tech. It's San Francisco. It's you know, it's going to be defined. And literally, nothing was defined <laughs> or built. They're like, oh, that's a good idea. Go and make it. And so. Uh, <laughs> And, and also, you know, it's people, people, um, I think sometimes don't really realize what, what's the makeup of these sort of companies and who, who is drawn to, you know, to go work there. And I, and I, so I worked within the operations side of the house. I, you know, worked on training. I've done, you know, built a lot of the internal processes, uh, but also worked on, you know, uh, one of my main jobs was, was managing support and people knock you know, Coinbase support all the time because it's tough. I no one expected the boom that we had, particularly, I mean, if you go back to like 14, 15, when, you know, Bitcoin was sitting around $200, no one ever thought that we were going to be where we are now. Or, this fast. This fast. And so that sort of, that sort of move was remarkable. But the people that we had employed, uh, you know, in the, in the support sector, we had a nuclear physicist who quit, you know, quit his job to go and start answering cases about your 2FA. We had a, uh, <laughs> a lawyer. We had, 
I mean, listen, I could go through and the resumes for, uh, you know, for the folks that were there were remarkable. And that was, and that's kind of what's been the neat part about being in this space is that right. you have knuckleheads like me, you know, who were flying helicopters a couple of years ago and then, and then working as a trader. Uh, my perspective is one. And then you move into a whole different group where it's, uh, you know, you've got, you've got finance, you've got anarchists, you've got, you know, people who are physicists and, and whatever. And you put all that together and the energy right. there is spectacular. So it's been, uh, it's, it, it was a wild ride. As well, right? I think Coinbase became like the Google of the Bitcoin space for a minute because people knew that they had a, a leg up on everyone, right? And that if you went there and you can get those stock options, then you would probably be catching a rocket ship. And so it didn't matter what your resume was. That's why you have someone who's an astrophysicist in there taking support calls because they're like, I just want to be on the rocket ship, right? Yep. And so that kind of idea. You being in operations, what have you seen from the old users of, of Bitcoin and now to the new users, not only Bitcoin, but 1,500 other uh, cryptocurrencies? What have you seen? For, like, I know you're talking about the anarchists. Have you seen a shift in the types of people that are coming into the game? Absolutely. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I think those folks are still there. Um, yeah. And, 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 I, and I would actually wager to say those are the few people who are actually using cryptocurrency in the way in which it was meant to be used. Um, I, I, I know, and, 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 you know, th things have changed and particularly in Coinbase, I like to see the growth of Coinbase. Now I left there in February. Um, uh, so I've been, I've been gone for uh, February of last year. So I've been gone for a full year now. The locks in the beard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, the, the transition was really beginning where there was there was a certain level of of folks that they could draw. Um, now, in, you know, people who are are startup minded um, and very entrepreneurial minded, it's tough to keep them. It's tough to keep those folks around as soon as corporate uh, structure starts taking over. Right. Uh, so the so the user base changed as well. I think as the as actually the build up in the in the dynamic of Coinbase itself. To where you had to bring in people who have 20 years of experience working at, you know, like some top level financial place. They're the ones who know how to take you from an idea to a business. That's not as exciting to someone who wanted to come in and, uh, you know, <laughs> crack code or want to come in and build and leave. So you see that turnover, but exactly what you're talking about. I mean, some of the folks, if you look around the who's who kind of right now in the crypto space and, and, and particularly uh, within the Ethereum ecosystem, Coinbase was just an incubator that, that that we haven't seen the likes of. It's in a way of like a PayPal uh, for you know for that, where you see all these spinoffs. I mean, that right. name name a name a big brand, and there's it's got Coinbase's uh, you know fingerprints on it. Right. Yeah. It became like the. Uh, I mean, a lot. Of, think about it, a lot of stuff, especially in the Valley. Ha it happens like that, right? You got like Fairchild Semiconductor births like Intel, right? And you got like all of these different companies that start to birth, you know, these um, other companies. And that's what that's what Coinbase has been in the space. Yeah. Coinbase, we all know Coinbase is a monopoly. Like there's no way around it, but every company that get, gains hold of a new emerging technology be, has to become a monopoly because it becomes the household name, right? Yeah. Um, here's another question because I... I uh, I tend to think that the anarchists and the ide uh, ideologues, those people who are like in it for the ideals of it, are the reason why it stays, like it doesn't drop too far. You know what I mean? Like they're the mm -hmm. holders that hold it regardless. They don't care about it. They had it when it was a penny. They're going to hold it when it drops to 10,000. You know what I mean? And I think those yep. are the types of people that are actually, I don't, I don't think um, people understand how those ideals are stronger than the actual price going up and down for those people. So can yeah. you get into some of the mentalities that you've seen being around the space and understanding that people are in it, what they're in it for? Cause I know you talked about it from the unbanked situation, but can you talk about why some of these people are so into it, not from a level of just trying to make money, but more around freedom. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think that's, I think that's a really good point. Um, and, you know, it's interesting because it, that was really one of the hopes and goals of of Bitcoin. Uh, you know, right? Was that you could you could be out from under the thumb of you know uh, of kind of the the regulation that that we've seen. 
I think as as we've as we've grown the space, we've we've seen that Bitcoin's not necessarily the best uh, um, vehicle for that, and uh, you know there's a lot of more private vehicles. But I think just the idea of controlling your money. It, this is this is something that is so yes, it's man. So hard for people, and so I think I think what you find is that it takes a little while for you get get your mind wrapped around this idea. So people who have been in the space like yourself, uh, you know, I saw. Uh, Dan Roseman is watching us, my boy. Um, <laughs> good to see you, guy. Uh, but, you know, guys that have been around for a while, I think the idea of the response, the personal responsibility that's required to actually be in control of your money, um, that's a that's a process. And so you you see people have been around and they understand that they have an idea. They also feel that freedom of what it is, and they understand what it means to you know to be in control. Um, that's a very new concept. And so when so when you are indoctrinated under those ideas uh, right that, that that's the that, that's the ideological part of it that 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 stays that stays with you and i think that's why you know I me mean, i why mm -hmm. i hold i mean i hold i hold all the time that, you know, hold all day <laughs> I, I, I hate i hate to get rid of my coins i mean it's like it's painful for me um <laughs> But I think that's a, that's a big difference between when you look at like people who are in it for this idea of I want to have complete freedom over my financial right. situation and folks who are saying, hey, I'm speculating on price. A much right. different. And, and I think you probably bring up a really good point of why that does tend to kind of limit some of those some of those big dips. But uh, yeah, so, which, which is which is very uh, a very astute idea, I believe. Yeah, because I think what's going on is that there is a limited number of Bitcoin. And so at a point, the people who have a lot of Bitcoin, they're just holding on to them. And what you're getting is the people who are just getting in to try to get the price spike. It drops, but it never drops all the way because you know what? People are not selling after a certain point, right? There's, not, there's, nothing, there's nothing else to sell. Because nobody, because people are, those people are looking at it from a coins perspective. They're not looking at it from a dollar perspective. So they're like, if I start selling off now, I'm getting rid of my coins. Like you said, everybody who's who's an old school holder is like Gollum in uh, Lord of the Rings. It's like my precious, oh my precious. <laughs> so yeah, man. So I guess you know what time is it? Because yeah, we close. I, I I never really tried to keep people longer than half an hour. I know you're a busy man. I know you just you you out here free having. You got a oh man, you got a beautiful kid, man. I saw the picture this morning with the glasses on. So I know you having a good time with your family, man. And that and to be honest, that kind of freedom comes. Here's what I'm gonna tell everybody. If you feel like there's a company out there that is in an emerging technology space and you see that they have a foothold as far as brand, it probably would behoove you to go join them. If you have amazing talents, go join them early. And then, you know, cause like even Fred, Fred left, right? Fred, who was one of the founders, he left to start his own thing. Go join them, get on that rocket ship. And I'm not a big proponent of working for nobody. Everybody who knows me knows I'm not that. But there are some instances where if you go and work for someone, it will elevate you to a level faster because you are working together with a rocket, with somebody who has a rocket ship. So I, I think that's really, really, really key. Here's the question. What do you see coming in the future? What types of services, being in operations at a very large company, what types of services do you think are needed in the cryptocurrency space, in the Bitcoin space as, as, a, as a whole? Yeah, well, I mean, we can go another thirty minutes. Uh, maybe we'll do this another day because no, I think we can talk. And listen, it, yeah. it's on you because I just try to respect my guest time. So it's yeah. on you if you want to talk, talk, brother. Yeah, I got about <laughs> I got about fifteen minutes, but we can definitely talk a lot about this. So, so really, what I've done, um, have it, having a financial background prior to getting into into the crypto space, uh, now I spend a lot of my time, and so I have a mining company and then an investment company, but then also. Uh, do a lot of consulting, um, and I and I and I consult with you know some of the largest banks and uh, uh, and funds in the world. It's, it's, and it's incredibly fascinating, particularly if you are if you're like if you're like you and I who have spent the last number of years so um, um, entrenched into this into this ecosystem in this industry. It it it's it's tough to remember and, and have that vision of what other people are looking at, you know, and that, that, that becomes a challenge. So we can definitely talk about that in a minute, but I just want to echo right. first. One of the things that you just said is that it is, it is hard to join a startup. And particularly if you are level, 
if you are used to X amount of respect, uh, <laughs> X amount of income, X amount of like, you know, things time. Like time, you, you join one of those things and you have to have vision. And one of the hard parts, and I'm sure you've experienced as an entrepreneur, is that so many people want it right now. And you have to be, you have to be a little bit patient, you know, and you, when you join, you have to kind of put your pride in the backseat. I, I, you may have done some amazing things in your career. Hey, <laughs> suck it up, learn a little bit, and then see what happens. And if you're willing to do that, boy, you can you can really do something. Man, um, yeah. yeah. Patience is huge. Patience, patience is huge. Is... People want the money right now. And uh, hey, how about how about develop some skills? How about develop some relationships and then see what happens? You know, give right. yourself, give it a year. Give it a year, man. People are are quick to jump, but. Uh, what you're talking about, like, what do we see coming next? Um, yeah, what's so, next? What, what's next? I, so for me, this, I, I like, I, I tell you, I, I can never shut up enough about Ethereum. So if you, anytime we talk, you're probably going to hear me talk Ethereum. Cause that's what gets me the most excited. There's some great projects out there, but the kind of what, what's on the horizon for Ethereum and, and, and projects being built on Ethereum are, um, are, are what really gets me the most excited. But uh, so, so I think there's kind of two different ways with we're talking about on the, you know, in the cryptocurrency ecosystem, the, the idea that I'm loving right now are the uh, decentralized exchanges. Um, so some of those, some of the projects like, uh, like Zero X, AirSwap, et cetera, Kyber, some of these ideas, what they're putting forward, I think are really going to change the way that people um, move their money and swap their money. And uh, this is, so, so coming from a, you know, Coinbase guy, I, you know, where there's a right. right there, there's a centralized exchange that is right for, you know, for revolution. I think there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of space that we're going to see there. Um, but the, but, but that once again goes to this idea of freedom of your, of money. You know, if you can have peer to peer swapping, if you can have smart contracts and no arbiter in between. Um, so I, I'm really excited about that. That opens up an enormous possibility. For, that's freedom. That's freedom. That's freedom. That's freedom. That's freedom, man. <laughs> so, so I'm I'm extraordinarily. We can talk more about those another time. But I'm really excited about some of those um, and some of the the processors that are that are starting to be built. Uh, you know, Omizgo, etc. But but what I've been focusing a lot of my energy on these days is the is kind of the you know the big old school financials, and and how can they get involved? And I think it would shock people to know. I mean, I talk to these folks daily uh, <laughs> right it would shock people to know how little they actually know i think that there's a there's kind of an underlying assumption that if you're talking goldman or jp morgan or some of these that these folks have done all the research <laughs> that they know everything and that they're that you know they have it i mean it's fascinating right there's, there's so many financial uh instruments that have yet to be built that are really uh, restraining that money that you know be pouring in so um you know this is one of the reasons and i and, and i hesitate to you know like i never try to give price advice or, or investment advice in this way but yeah there, there 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 there's going to be some exciting times ahead if you look at some of the things um of like where a lot of the money is going in the ecosystem look at um like, look at Coinbase. They did custody is one of their new products. It, right. didn't get a lot of, it didn't get a lot of play because it's not sexy. But to have a trusted custodial advice is one of the is one of the key pieces uh, of, of to allow that. Because I'll get on I'll get on with these I'll get on with these you know, hedge funds. And all right, this is this is a true story. I, there's not a whole lot of names I can divulge, but I'll tell you right. so this. this this hedge fund was was the first to invest in Tesla, and they 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 really hold themselves up as like being on the bleeding edge of technology. Well, they were just calling me a couple of weeks ago, so I mean, we're it, you want to think it, like are we are we still new? I think we're still new, <laughs> but right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so when they when they talk to it, they're like, well, all right, well if we if we invest, then what? I'm like, well, you're gonna if, if you're you're in control of those coins, like you gotta know how to you, you're gonna need. You know, they have proper security practices. You're going to need, uh, you know, like you have to. There's a whole chain of um, of events that are going to take for you to buy a billion dollars worth of cryptocurrency. Um, right. And what's that going to be? So always, almost always, 
the next thing that they say to me is, well, can we just invest in you? I'm like, no, I don't, I don't got a hedge fund. Sorry. Man. <laughs> <laughs> so to see these, these financials come, because man, if you are going to, if you're going to be in the, uh, you know, in the cryptos business, you've got to be in the cybersecurity business. And like, there are all these steps that you have to make. Uh, it's right. it's kind of like if we were doing gold, you got to be in the safe business. And so it's, it's kind of the same way. So there's a lot of these companies that are looking, they're waiting, they're, they're watching for either, uh, you know, the future contracts like that we've seen roll out, um, the potential of doing an ETF or, you know, or custodial audited custodial services. Um, so right. when, people, when people like just kind of turned a blind eye to Coinbase's, uh, uh, that, that product that they put out or, or have announced in November, for me, I mean, I was like, this is huge. So we'll see those, those financial instruments. Um, those have those have really widespread implications because let's just think about it. Imagine if there's a there's a someone on the sideline and it's not hard for a company or a, uh, you know, a retirement, uh, you know, a, a pension to come to say we want to do one percent in an emerging technology. We choose crypto and now now there's five billion dollars they want to roll in okay and they have precedent of when and how they how they invest that they come in was that due to price was that due to these projects who are who are holding crypto after their right. uh, their, their fund launches how many how many developers does that hire how many you know how much how much marketing does that deliver on so so the idea of we're still small we're still growing and as word of mouth Man, that can change. That can change in a moment. But it's these it's these little bits of the financial uh, uh, instrumentation that that comes in that allows that. So right, uh, so right. that's super boring, and and people would rather hear about like let's talk about you know like the I don't know ETH roll. Let's talk about gambling. Let's talk about something like that. Yeah. But really, the boring stuff is what kind of really changes stuff. And that's the thing that I think is that makes me so happy about the space is that as we move further and further toward decentralization. Um, and making sure you have these exchanges that are not necessarily centralized. The biggest part for me is gatekeeping, right? Because yeah. the problem is, is that if you get into a decentralized exchange, no one can stop you from trading with anyone else and no one can stop you from being quote unquote listed in the exchange. If you have the asset and somebody wants it, it's on you to market it and sell it, tell everyone it's out there on the decentralized exchange, but that doesn't stop anyone from getting to your asset. And I think mm -hmm. that stuff is what's going to to skyrocket everything. Um, I love atomic swaps. I love what people are doing, trying to do with the Lightning Network. A lot of that stuff still has a ways to go, but the whole idea that freedom can come to the people who want to get into this space. What I found just doing this and trying to educate people, a lot of people don't know about finances because there are so many gatekeepers in between. And anyone yep. can go look it up, but a lot of times that information only is is privy to a certain type of person, right? Because you can't go start a fund. You can go get these little apps with like a stash app and all of that. Those are good inroads and gateways. But at the end of the day, you don't understand everything that you need to know about what an asset is, those kind of things. You're just going in buying stuff and it becomes like going to the casino. That's what's going on yeah. with the crypto game. You go to yeah. Binance, you, just, you basically go, oh, here's the lowest one. Let's buy that one. Let's see if it goes up. The, pro the, the, cool pro the problem with that is, is that it doesn't really educate anyone. The cool part about that, though, is that by them buying these little coins and losing, that becomes education. Like, pe like someone said before, that's your tuition. Your tuition <laughs> is going in and failing, right? Everybody going in and doing that stuff. So all paid, haven't we? Everybody paid that price. At some point along this crypto game, we paid that price, man. So I really appreciate you coming on. I think the future will show a lot of decentralization. One other question I want to ask, and I don't think people talk about it enough, but as these cryptocurrencies become ubiquitous and there are decentralized exchanges, do you think that's going to harm companies like Coinbase and other exchanges that rely on the fiat into crypto to be their business model? Because once yep. it becomes ubiquitous, why do I need to trade it for fiat? If anybody in the world will take what I have, there's no reason for me to ever use a government currency again. So what do you think about that? I mean, I, first of all, me, I love that idea. Of course. <laughs> I love we, that idea. we the same. <laughs> I, and, and what I hope and, I, and, and kind of, you know, and where, what I've seen a lot of is that, um, you know, there's, 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 there's smart people out there that, 
like you know people in and i can just speak for coinbase i've got a lot of you know a lot of um contacts around the industry as well i, I it, but they're, they're they're thinking right now how to monetize how to, how to actually move forward because if you stay within a if you're if, if coinbase's end goal is to is to push decentralization while being centralized then they missed it and those guys haven't missed it um uh, right. so I, so I think that there's a lot of, of, of thought there of how do we actually transition our businesses. And you're seeing right. some of these ideas. The real challenge is how do we make a token that actually has any utility uh, that we can monetize? And I think this is really one of the big questions facing, you know, all of all of crypto land right now is because there's we're still caught up in the old school idea of yes. of how, we, how we raise money, how we monetize all of this. Yes. So, so we're still in that transition phase. I is going to blow our brains, right? Once we actually get to a place of where we figure out we don't we don't have to use the same systems that we did two hundred years ago. Right. We're not there. We're not there yet. So it's going to be a little bit ugly. I think you're going to see some some businesses rise and fall. Some names that you you know that that we're used to rise and fall. We're going to see some players come out of nowhere. But what I don't think we're going to see are um, some of these tokens that that some well well-known brands, bigger brands have come out and announced like that they're just, Hey, it's, it's, it's adding.com to the end of a, in, you know, from 2000, yeah. those coins <laughs> are going away. There, there, there was, there was a, uh, you know, I can't remember who it was the other day. It was saying 90% of coins are going to, are going to fail. They're going to go zero. And I agree a hundred percent because if things don't have purpose, if there's no utility, they will go away. So all those are, are ideas. How do we monetize? How do we build business plans, you know, surrounding the, this, this idea of decentralization where I don't have to have fiat. So what some of these coins are looking to do is re create a coin that they then sw switch into fiat to go into a standard old school business plan. All right. Yeah. Uh, so, so that, that's one of those things that we're going to start seeing transition and, and bad ideas go away. That's, that's the market. Bad ideas so go away. This is something I always say, Luke. It's like if people were, if, if people understood history, and I'm not a huge history person because I like building the future, but if you understand history from a technology standpoint, the companies that made it and are huge on the internet today and that are some of the most valuable companies in the world, they're not the ones that were me too's. Amazon mm -hmm. didn't go and try to build a whole bunch of department stores. Facebook didn't go and build a community center for you to come and join people, right? <laughs> This, these are not the me too types of things. When you have a new technology, the companies that really take off are the ones that can only use that technology. Google would not exist without the internet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that, those companies, the ones that can actually use the technology and make something new, not try to fit some old model, those are the companies that you should look at. Those are the ones. And that's why when I go through and look at a bunch of the ICOs, I say they're marketing because you can read one ICO and it looks just like the next ICO and like yep. the next ICO. You know why? Because it's a bunch of sales dudes sitting in the room looking at other ICOs and whichever one raised the most, they go and copy that same copy down. Yep. The thing is, is to think differently, to think outside the box and to do things that couldn't have happened without the technology that you're trying to build on. Those will be the things I think that push the push the envelope forward. And here's another part. Usually at times like these, there has to be a fight. And the problem is, is that regulators are coming in trying to regulate this new industry the same way they regulated other stuff. There has to be a people have to stand up and say, you know what, this is what we want, right? We're tired of you trying to trying to pseudo protect us from ourselves. Yeah. Right. This is what this is what we want. And I know you I know you uh, fought for the Navy, man. So and, and first of all, thank you for your service. But at the end of the day, it's like this is the type of revolution that can be fought without guns. This mm -hmm. is the kind of revolution that all you have to do is stand up for yourself and say, you know what? I just want the option to put my money wherever I want to put it and use whatever currency I want to use. And and without people being because they people think if you use other currencies that it'll kill the economy. But the thing is, the true currency is our goods. It's like if I have something you need, that's the real currency. We're just using the middle part as a medium of exchange that mm -hmm. we can use to trade goods with each other that maybe not be the good that we want at that time. That's that, at the end of the day. That's why it's like we have to know we have the power as people 
to make these decisions and to tell regulators, chill, hold up. It's been running for nine years. We ain't had much. I can tell people right now to raise their hand if they actually been defrauded in the in the crypto space. And I guarantee there's more people who haven't than have. And mm -hmm. that's just the truth. But guess what they highlight? Hey, here goes, right? It's like yeah. it's like when they when they put videos up of black guys being thugs. I know far more black dudes that are nerds than there are thugs. Like it's just real talk. You know what I'm saying? It's the same yeah. type of thing. So they try to put fear in your face and tell you, you're going to lose all your money you get in crypto or you're going to get your, your coin stolen. It's like, no, they're only going to get their coin stolen if they have not been educated to learn how to protect those coins. I mean, my man Luke's been holding for a long time. I've been holding for a long time. We have to get rid of those old mindsets of fear and get over that and get it moving to a new paradigm where we can all work together freely. That's all it is. But... Man, I'm gonna get off my soapbox, man. Anything, any last words you wanna you wanna say? Well, hey, I just want to say thank you. And like the amount that you give back to the community uh, it is is tremendous. I mean, it's just it's a free gift, and uh, and and I just want to say thank you. Um, but I, I'd Thanks, love if, if you have any interest, I'd love to continue the conversation. Uh, you know, soon we can definitely definitely hop on there. But you know, it's it's important. It's so important. Um, I think to continue to to say exactly what what you've been saying is that we have to remember why we got into this and we have to remember price is sexy and listen money changes <laughs> people's lives money yeah. changes people's lives and it and it and it and it can open up doors that you know to, to build businesses to follow passions to help people it opens up those doors and i you know and i and i i thank the good lord that he that he's you know bless bless us and being able to be in this position yes but but it's also incredibly important that we remember why did we start this? Was it just like if if this is the same to you as it as like a really good penny stock, then <laughs> then then you missed it. You missed you it. missed it. Yes. Uh, and so like it, we have to continue yeah. to go back. And it's one of the things that I really love about a lot of what the uh, what a, what consensus has been building. And I got a ton of respect for those people. Um, I got a lot of friends over there in consensus. What they've been building, a lot of those ideas, they don't look, they don't look sexy. They're not driving up price. Some of those projects are people forward projects, and right. that is what that is what this this place can be about. Um, and so once we do that, if we like always go back to this idea, we're about people. We're about people. This is about people. This is about affecting and changing people's lives. Hey, if the dollars go up, great. Well, you know. Yeah. But, but but if it doesn't, what happens if if it never goes anywhere? If it, if it is at whatever the price of your favorite coin that you're holding right now never moves, man, what what happens? Is, can we still affect lives? Is it still do stuff? Is the technology still there that like we can help bank to unbank that we can help? Like, uh, uh, gosh, I love. We'll, we'll talk about some stuff in the future. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, look, look. We don't, don't don't eat it our way up, Luke. Because <laughs> you know you and I can talk about this stuff forever. Oh, um, Luke, I really appreciate you. Luke was, look, Luke was front row at probably my, I was in my first one, yeah. my first Bitcoin one-on-one section. Uh, he was front row, chilling right there, man. He still had, a, he didn't have as much, you know, of the of the beautiful mane at that time. But hey, man, I appreciate everything, Luke. I'm so glad you took the leap and jumped into Coinbase. And I'm so glad you're still out here, like spreading the word about freedom and how we can become economically free if we just trust. If we just trust the trustless system, you understand what I'm saying? I That's do. the coolest part, man. So thank you very much, man. And I will. What I'm gonna do is, you guys know what I do after these interviews. We have a jump in show, so Luke can hang around and watch the jump in show. But um, Luke, thank you, man. Appreciate yep. it. Everybody saying 10, ten out of ten, man. And we'll have you back on for sure. Great job, Luke. Yeah, good job, Luke. Thanks. Love your families. Talk yeah, love you too, man. Love your family too. And your and your cool baby like this. Yeah, I know. I saw it. <laughs> you see this sad ass was cold. All right. See you later, man. All right, cheers. Yeah, cheers, man. Yeah, that was awesome. That was a dope interview. So listen, everybody. Oh, we can't get him off. It's one of them tags. Excellent. Okay. So listen, anybody wants to jump in? Turn your phone to the side. We can get on here. We can talk about anything. This is what we do. Turn your phone to the side. Jump in the show. We'll talk about whatever what we were talking about with Luke. Um, I mean, Luke did an awesome job. Gave a lot of great info about the insides of working with uh, Coinbase. Here's the thing. If you want more of these types of interviews, make sure you follow me at 
Facebook.com slash Big Mar, B I G M A R H. So, Facebook.com slash Big Mar. Make sure you follow me there. You can also come to the Black Coin Group. Listen, it says Black Coin Group, but it's for everybody. If you're down for the cause and helping out create solutions for Black folk to, to become equally uh, economically equal and get on the same playing field, come to the group. We don't care if you Black, Red, Green, Yellow. The, but the Black Coin Group is even more than that. It's just pure love, man. That's one of the best groups I've been a part of on Facebook. Everybody shares great information. Everybody works together. People are helping each other. It's just pure love and fun in that group. So I, we got our first jump in. Let's see who we got here. My man, Mike Pierce. Let's see. Come on, Mike. Let's, let's see if we can get in. My man, Mike Pierce. Yeah. He's a What's up, Big Mar? I, I pulled over. I pulled over. I pulled over. You know, we, we got a room. No live and drive, man. No live and drive. So what's up, man? What you want to talk about, hey, dog? Hey, listen, man. Like I say, I'm up 95 from Baltimore to New Jersey twice a day every day, man. I catch you when I catch you. I definitely, definitely appreciate this thing today, bro. I yeah. definitely appreciate it. This information was so valuable, man. And I only get a chance to, you know, grab snippets of it. But this information right there, the nuggets that he dropped, I was paying attention. I hope everybody else is paying attention. But I was paying attention to them nuggets that he dropped. Without going directly, I got you. <laughs> I definitely, you definitely got to bring that brother back and more, and more people like him. You know, I don't yeah, want to hold you too long. But that right there, that that's this was yeah. the golden goose for me. I'm good. I appreciate you. I That's what's up. Appreciate you. the question. What did you what give me one nugget that you like the most, man? Give us a recap. I like how he, you know, him being in the financial space is letting you know that, you know, the 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 fear or the propaganda is is just propaganda. You know what I mean? Don't let that stop you from from venturing on this this journey. This new this new uh it's it's kind of like the industrial revolution. You know, so many people was used to the horse and buggy, and they start seeing all them bills. You know, they scared of that thing. But you got to break yeah. past the barrier <laughs> so that you can get down. Look at us today. Everybody's riding around in cars and luxury vehicles. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, the same yeah. type of revolution. So this financial revolution is probably the biggest financial revolution that anybody's ever seen in the yeah, history of man. Yeah, so, man. You know, that's the nugget yeah. I took from it. And then him, you know, dropping the jewels about, you know, who to look for as opposed to, you know, how to weed it out without saying how to weed it out. He, he dropped some jewels on what you really need to be looking at and paying attention to going forward that's really going to benefit you in the long run. You know, yeah, and, and all the guys that's in there for the quick drop, hold on to that stuff, man. Hold on to it. <laughs> So I, yeah. I got some nuggets, man. I pre like I said, I appreciate you. I don't want to hold you. I'm working. I want you to let somebody yeah. else on there, man. We'll, we'll, we'll ho I'll holler at you. Yeah, see you, Mike. Hey, we appreciate you, brother. <laughs> always. You know we always appreciate you on the show, man. Yes, Let's sir. I appreciate it. Oh, I done flipped the camera. I can't for some I can't turn my there you go. <laughs> oh, we got O'Neal Bosley, man. Yeah, that was good. That was that was good stuff. O'Neal, yours is not working right now. Is what I'm gonna tell you to do. Cause I can always tell. I can always tell because it's not showing adding. What you need to do is close your app down and like close it completely down, then come back in. Usually, what's happening is is that you're out of sync, so you're a little bit behind. So come back in, man. We love to hear what you got to say. Let's see who else is on here. That's O'Neal Bosley. Anybody else want to come live today? Listen, Luke. Really, I mean. He really stimulated thought in a lot of people. Look, you can always sell the old school guys. And I'm trying to set up some more old school guys to come in, people who've been around for a while. Um, yeah, my old my dude O'Neal's trying to get in, Rich. Uh, uh, listen, I'm calling him Richard. That's law. I'm, he's trying to get in, law. Um, so we'll see if he can we'll see if he can get in. It's it's not working right now. Because sometimes you guys, I'm telling you, if you had a seat. Facebook won't let you jump in, and so you'll have this thing where it's hard. So what you normally have to do is go in. What I do is go in, close my app, and, and delete the cache. But I can't really explain all of it right now. So if you know how to delete the storage cache on your Facebook app, that normally helps it out a lot. Um, let's see. Who else we got? Any Anybody else want to hop in? Anybody else want to jump in? Let's see. See if he's back. There we go. It looks like it's going to work this time. Come on, O'Neal. What's going on? Ain't too much, man. What's going on? Man, I'm doing great. How you doing? Doing well, man. What's, so what's up? What you want to talk about, Doc? 
I just want to tell you, man, that I commend what you're doing. I've been advocating this before Facebook Live was even a thing. You know, I've done over 600 videos, and I continually encourage people to get on here and express whatever their depiction of reality is. It doesn't matter. I don't care what your background is, what your knowledge base is. Yeah. Get on your phone, get on your camera, brush your teeth, do whatever you have to do, and just come on here and discuss and engage in dialogue with somebody else over this type of communication means. I mean, this is very right. vital, very important, very futuristic. I mean, we can actually build the world that we know we need to be living in by people doing things like both you and I. And so, and very few people and too few people are doing. Man, I just, I love you. I appreciate you. I'm, I'm, love I'm, you just too, telling, man. I'm so happy right now. I'm so happy. I just don't know what to do. <laughs> hey, I, I appreciate you too, man. I really do. Hey, man. So here's the thing. Tell, tell people who what you do, what you're about. We we always give people a chance to really talk about my man O'Neill is making making moves down in Louisiana. So go ahead, tell them what you're about, O'Neill. Uh, okay. Well, I have, I come from a family of um of my, my my father was beat up by some police officers a very long time ago. He was beat up so bad that when he walked in the house, my grandmother called the police on him because she couldn't even recognize him. Yeah. Uh, my mother is white, so he had a white girlfriend back in the seventies uh, working at a chemical plant, which very few people had a job working at a chemical plant back then. So he had some money, right. you know, and he'd be riding around on motorcycle with his white wife. And I have flying in the wind, you know, they, they didn't have to have helmets back in the 70s, you know, so he made a lot of enemies. Um, <laughs> and because of the injustice and the inequality, he was inspired in order to get involved with politics. And when he did, uh, he was introduced to a lot of the political practices that were going on with the existing infrastructures at that particular time, which is not too different from the way that things are still going right now. Right. So uh, as by me watching him trying to be an advocate of what we should be doing as a people when it comes down to representing yourself through the electoral process, you know, I was pretty much deterred and disgusted from what he was experiencing in his endeavor in order to enlighten the people. So when I was old enough to vote, I wasn't even concerned about voting. I cared less about it. It was just a soul of disgusting of an atmosphere. I shied away from it. And I was pretty aggressive when I was young, and I, and I think I would have gotten a whole lot of trouble if I would have tried to make a difference with that young mind that I had. So uh, when, I, when I started to learn how impactful we can be just as you are being impactful in the area of blockchain technology, cryptocurrency, and some of the potentials that now exist and could futuristically exist, I saw opportunity to increase awareness when it comes down to us strategically positioning ourselves in government to ensure that we have representation from these people that we elect. Uh, and, you know, I've been an advocate of that ever since I've seen that potential. Right. Um, when Facebook came along and I, I had a business at the time, uh, my, my background is in electronics engineering, electronics technology. And I said, OK, well, I'm going to start a Facebook account as a business account. Right. But I've seen so much foolishness. I've seen so much nonsense. Right. I say, hold on. I say, hold on. I got I hold on. Hold on. I can be advertising my business, promoting myself, and I gotta watch fights and I gotta watch cussing and, and, and just whipping the nae and ice bucket challenge. Are you serious? <laughs> I say, oh no. I say, I'm gonna dedicate my page just to fighting for what's right now. I don't even care about business no more. Right. If you won't come on my page with that foolishness, I'm about to address your foolishness, you know? <laughs> and for the last five or six years, I've been addressing foolishness on Facebook. Too. Hey, man, we appreciate it. I just <laughs> met O'Neill. I, 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 um, I did a show for La. To his to his folk, and then they got me and Law connected. Then I saw Law and O'Neill talking, and I think you're a, a great, genuine man. And and like he's talking about, we have to hold our elected officials accountable because at the end of the day, they're supposed to be public servants. I think we forget to to hold them up to the fact that they need to be serving the public. So what he's talking about is real, man. So I appreciate you, O'Neill, man. And we we gonna try to jump jump somebody else off in here, brother. All right, look, let, let me let me say one more thing. Yeah, go ahead, man. Go ahead. Regardless of and and, and I want us to really see how we really need to be getting involved with this stuff. Regardless of how good your blockchain program or your cryptocurrency program may be, even Bitcoin, as enormous as it is right now, guess what? It's going to be sitting on the desk of a politician one day for approval. So regardless of how successful your plan or your endeavors may be or how big your dream may seem, it might be sitting on the, on the desk of a politician that can hardly read and write that determines whether you are successful or you are not successful. So I want you all to take that into consideration yeah. when you're building your dream. All right? I love you, man. That's real. Love you too, brother. Love you too. Talk to all you right. later, man. All right.
Yeah. No problem. Yeah, hold on. His, hold on. Your, his Facebook name is O'Neal Bosley Jr. O'Neal Bosley Jr. That's his name. O'Neal, throw a comment, uh, link or something to your page down there. So if there's no one else, what time is it? Yep, it's perfect. Listen, if there's no one else, um, this was a great day. We had a wonderful time. Really good, really good interview with my man Luke. I got some other people I'm lining up right now. I mean, y'all just stick and stay with the Big Mar channel. I have more of a schedule type of thing. It'll never be directly on the time we say because sometimes there's technical issues. And we want to make sure it's just right before we get going. But we'll have a schedule that's ish. It'll be a, a, a 11 ish, right? Um, schedule so you guys can be on the lookout, watching out for some of the stuff we're doing. We're going to do next week. Um, never give them a yeah, so here's a quick lineup. I'm trying to do health on Mondays, entrepreneurship and finance on Tuesdays. Wednesdays, we're going to do faith with my man Leif. On Thursdays, it's going to be all about pop culture and the jump-in shows like this one. So we'll have an interview and then a jump-in show at night. We'll have a jump-in show tonight. It's going to be around 6.30, 7-ish. So make sure, you, make sure you check that out. We're talking about pop culture issues. And then on Fridays, we're going to do a crypto roundup. And we're trying to get um, some, of, some of my guys in the space who are really, really uh, awesome at giving the news in crypto, trying to get them on on Fridays. So y'all just stick and stay. Check out Big Mar. Again, facebook.com slash Big Mar. Share where you can. We're trying to get information out there. We're trying to educate folks about love, freedom, and light all day. Live love, love life. See y'all later.